Unless you've been living under a rock made out of Pathfinder 2E or Shadow Dark for the last year, then you know that as far as Hasbro, Wizards of the Coast, and Dungeons and Dragons are concerned, 2023 has been a terrible year for the product, the company, and its fans. I want to talk about some of these things that happened while trying to avoid making this video too clickbaity. First, let me tell you a quick story. It's relevant, I promise. When I was itty bitty, I adored the Star Wars movies. By that, I mean the original trilogy. When I would play with Lego bricks on the floor of the living room, I had episode four on repeat in the family VHS player over and over and over again. Return of the Jedi was my favorite. Yes, I know Empire Strikes Back is objectively a better movie, but ROTJ was my jam. Don't at me. Anyway, when the prequels came out, I was still pretty young, but certainly old enough to know a good movie from a bad movie. I was so excited for Phantom Menace. And then I watched it, stunned. I remember leaving the theater thinking, wait, why do I have this strong notion that what I just saw was terrible? It's Star Wars, how could it be bad? Star Wars can't be bad, it's just not possible. And I spent years trying to convince myself that it couldn't have been as bad as I thought it was. But then Attack of the Clones was even worse. What a system shock to reconcile these feelings of a media property I venerated falling so hard from its pedestal. The point of that story was that it took me a long time to finally admit that Star Wars can be bad. That of all the movies and TV shows, only a small handful of them are actually high quality. I'll tell you which ones I think are good at the end of this video so we can fight about it in the comments. But it's the power of nostalgia and bias that kept me deluding myself for so long. I was a George Lucas apologist for much longer than I should have been. Maybe there's a lesson here that applies to D&D, but I'll let you figure that out for yourself. Anyway, let me give you a high-level recap of all the D&D scandals and misfires from the year 2023, with my thoughts interjected here and there. First, let's talk about the OGL kerfuffle. Arguably the biggest deal in all of 2023 TTRPG news, WotC tried to scuttle their existing open gaming license for a new license that was a lot more restrictive and would have had creators kicking up more of their profits to Mafia Dawn Wizards of the Coast. See, WotC seemed to have forgotten the lesson they'd already learned several decades ago when they realized that the core books were the most profitable IP and outsourcing adventure and supplement creation to other companies would keep their overhead low while allowing the fans to have a steady stream of new content. This, along with a Hasbro exec saying that D&D users were under-monetized, left a very poor taste in the mouths of WotC consumers. Sure, they reversed course when people voted with their wallets by canceling D&D Beyond subs. Putting the SRD into the Creative Commons was a good move, but the damage had been done. The goodwill already eroded at this point took a major hit. Next, the D&D movie. Arguably, this should have been a high point for Hasbro, but fresh off the heels of the OGL scandal, it didn't make enough money. In my personal opinion, they had too many preview showings, so it didn't do gangbusters on opening weekend, and a delayed release schedule meant it had only been out for a week when it had to compete against the juggernaut of the Mario movie. Personally, I loved the Honor Among Thieves movie. It was great fun. I even bought a copy on Blu-ray. But it just didn't make enough money. And they also dropped the ball by not having a movie tie-in starter set ready to go. If they'd sold new box sets with Chris Pine's face on them at the movie theater, they would have cleaned up. Just saw the movie? Want to recreate that fun at home with your friends? Pick up this box set. Big miss. In hindsight, Hasbro should have delayed the movie until late summer or early fall to coincide with the release of Baldur's Gate 3. Maybe they had no idea BG3 would blow up like it did. But the timing would have worked much better since that game was all anyone could talk about for three or four solid months. Next up, the Pinkerton scandal. This, in my humble opinion as a rich and famous YouTube celebrity, is one where the bad PR from the event greatly outweighed the actual newsworthiness of the thing. Let me explain. What happened was a YouTuber got some Magic the Gathering cards he wasn't supposed to. They weren't released yet and were under a media embargo. But sensing an irresistible opportunity to get a scoop on YouTube, the guy made a video about them. Soon, detectives showed up at his door demanding he give the cards back. Now, 
If this was all you knew about the situation, you might say, well, he wasn't supposed to do what he did, so Watsi's response wasn't that big of a deal. But where it turns scandalous in terms of the optics is that Watsi sent agents from the Pinkerton Agency to collect them. Most people in the gaming community were like, wait, you mean those bad guys from Red Dead 2? Yes, they've always been a real thing, and yes, they're still around. There were also stories about these Pinkertons behaving badly during the door knock episode, like scaring the guy's wife, etc. As to what truly happened when they showed up at this YouTuber's door, no one actually knows except for the people who were there. But the PR damage was done. Again. Fourth on our list is the Hadozy incident. This one I'm not going to delve into deeply, as it's a touchy subject and I'm not personally qualified to debate it. The short version is that Wizards introduced an updated version of a 5e race with simian features and slavery in their backstory, and it made a lot of people uncomfortable. It seemed like a dumb thing to do in the same year that Watsi was taking great pains to edit the old core books to use language more inclusive of gender and to remove words like savage and also be more considerate around depictions of mental health. The next controversy was over AI art. Using AI programs to generate art became a newsworthy item in late 2022 and has been the topic of heated, mouth-frothing debate ever since. Personally, I'm of the opinion that it doesn't really matter how we feel about AI, it's inevitable, and resistance is futile like the Borg. Pretty soon, authors like me will be out of business when AI could write full novels indistinguishable from human prose. It's only a matter of time. Anyway. Wizards released a book called Bigby's Glory of the Giants in the fall of 23. This book contained at least one piece of AI-generated or AI-assisted art, which eagle-eyed viewers spotted because some elements didn't look quite right. At least in its current state, AI does not do hands or feet well, and something about an image tipped off internet sleuths. Watsi said, don't blame us, we didn't know, it slipped through, but due to the amount of prior damage caused to all the public goodwill, Nobody really cared that it was an accident. Just another example of Watsi doing bad. Next is a small thing, but this year D&D launched a free ad-supported streaming channel. 24-7 D&D programming sounds cool, but I found it terribly difficult to even locate the damn thing online. That's because I was using Freevee, which had no search function on the TV app, and I had to scroll through dozens of other channels just to find the D&D channel. I later learned it was a lot easier to locate the channel on Plex, but by then I'd stopped caring. The thing is, no one seemed to be talking about this channel. It was non-news within a couple days of release. Why didn't they just put these new shows on their YouTube channel or Twitch? What's so great about this old tech of a live television platform? Come on, Boomer. The seventh sin of the Wizards of the Coast was the Book of Many Things printing. This wasn't anything nefarious, but the company had to basically halt printing on the Book of Many Things physical product because it failed quality standards. I've seen a couple of YouTube videos of people who got advanced copies and yeah, they're not great. The card edges are all janky and not uniform. In hindsight, this would have been an actual scandal if they had gone ahead and shipped all these crappy products. But in this case, it's just a misfire for a company who is already in need of serious PR plastic surgery. Finally, the worst of the bunch was the layoffs. Now look, I'm a grown-up, and I understand that this is just how capitalism works. When a public company misses their projections, massive layoffs make Wall Street happy. It makes the shareholders feel like the company is being proactive to get leaner, like they're taking it seriously. That doesn't make it right, and firing 1,100 people right before the holiday season feels especially cruel. And I've seen lots of people taking serious umbrage with the CEO's exorbitant salary and benefits package. Again. This is just how capitalism works. It sucks, but not much can be done. Your boycott of DMD isn't going to make a dent here, because this is parent company Hasbro's doing. The ultimate point is that for many users of WotC products, this was just another nail in the coffin. Maybe the final one. There were other things I could have talked about, like print book prices increasing, but I feel like this is enough. Watsi's terrible, horrible, no good, very bad year sure was a doozy, and I will be watching with equal parts dread and fascination to see what they do in 2024. Oh, my favorite Star Wars? Sure, let me break it down for you. Number one, Return of the Jedi. Number two, Empire Strikes Back. Number three, Star Wars, episode four. Number four, Andor. Number five, Rebels, especially seasons two through four. Number six, Rogue One. Number seven, The Force Awakens. 
Number eight, The Last Jedi, which I actually thought was awesome. Then nine through infinity, everything else which is basically forgettable. Yeah, even The Mandalorian was forgettable. It just wasn't that great. Okay, that's all. Have a great New Year's, and we'll see you on the other side.